from Atlanta, Georgia, broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is the Real World Business Analysis Podcast. And now your host, Kara Lease. Well, hello, hello, hello. It's your girl, Kara Lease. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Welcome to another podcast episode where you'll be hanging out with me, Kara Lease, your business analyst coach. And we're going to be talking about some very important things in this podcast. Yep. Very, very important. You saw the title of this. The layoffs are here. Layoffs are here, people. And uh, it's tough. It's tough. But every morning you wake up, there's a new tech company or other company that's laying off thousands and thousands of workers. Now, you know, I am from a world where layoffs happen pretty frequently. If you guys saw my YouTube short series, where I talked about being laid off. And in that series, I was given an example of how I got laid off twice uh, within like a 30-day period. (laughs) I mean, in a very short time. It could be a little bit more than 30 days. But, you know, throughout the year, uh, I've been in situations where layoffs just happen. It's a part of the norm, really, because I work in tech. But there's something that feels different about this set of layoffs. Not only is it the scale of the layoff, it's like thousands and thousands of people, but it's also happening very, very suddenly and all at once, right? So IBM is laying off, Google is laying off, Meta is laying off, Apple is laying off, Amazon is laying off. I mean, Confluence is laying off, Salesforce is laying off. It's it's all of them, and it's not just tech. It starts with tech. But I have some bad news for all my friends who are in public sector, who I know people who, you know, they look at the private sector and they think, oh, wow, it's so volatile out there. And I have people who work with the government and they feel pretty cushy, you know. <laughs> and they always say, Carly, it's come over by the government side. You know, we don't have to deal with all that stuff that you deal with. Um because I've had friends who watch me go through layoffs and they're like in awe. They're like, you don't even look phased. Like, you're not even worried. Aren't you like, don't you like worry about these things? I'm like, no, God provides. God provides. And within a short time, I have something else lined up or I have something like whatever I have to do, I do. And I often find myself right back to where I need to be in a very short time. But again, there is something different about this set of layoffs that's coming. I believe that this is not just your typical economic problems where the markets are down and inflation is high and that's the reason for the layoff. I really do believe that there's other underlying things going on globally that is causing the amount of layoffs that we're seeing. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what to do if you get laid off and how you can cope and give you some ideas as to what to to do next, okay? So I fully appreciate that a lot of people really take it hard when they get laid off because this is your livelihood. This is how you live. This is how you pay your bills. This is how you survive. And when that's taken away, suddenly it can wreak havoc on your financial life, your mental state, all of these different things. And, you know, it's it's one thing if it's just your company, but when all the companies around you are also laying off, it's like, okay, where do I find a job where everybody's laying off people, nobody's hiring. So that's, that's, a, that's a very nerve-wracking situation to be in. And I, I have to say this, again, back to my government working friends, It's coming for you too. Something tells me that this is not just a private sector or tech company problem. I think it's starting with tech and they're the most, um, the fastest to react. But I believe everybody's going to feel this regardless of whether you're in healthcare, you're in insurance, you're in energy, you're in any of these industries that normally 
believe that they're kind of cushioned, I think we're all going to get it. Um, government, you're going to see layoffs in government as well. And so this is going to affect a lot of people. There's a lot of people that's going to be affected by this thing. So let's talk about what we can do if we end up being laid off and also how to just mentally prepare for it, you know. Um, you're going to see where sometimes companies will stick it out because they have, maybe they have funding, maybe they raise capital, maybe, you know, they have these important projects that they don't really want to disrupt. But as soon as those projects come to an end this year, they're reevaluating everybody and getting rid of people, right? So this is the problem that a lot of people are going to find themselves being suddenly laid off. And it's really hard. It's hard. They're racking up into it three times. So understand it. <laughs> doesn't make it any easier. But I rely on God and I'm a very religious person. So it kind of, that takes the worry away. I don't really walk around with too much worry. So that's, that's me. I know there are a lot of people who aren't um, in that mental state that I am in. So let's talk about it. So the first thing that happens in the layoff is the shock, right? You know it's coming. You hear about it. You're crossing your fingers hoping it doesn't hit you and then it hits you. And you're shocked and you're like, oh, my God, you know. Maybe you are saving up some little slush money. You know, okay, I can pay my mortgage for another three months. But after that, I'm going to be, you know, suffering or I have all these other bills I have to pay. And it's the first thing you start thinking about is how are you going to survive? How are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to make sure you don't get evicted? How are you going to make sure they don't repossess your house, you know, or foreclose on you? Those are the typical things that goes in the minds of people. And then they start panicking and then all the other things happen after that. So the first thing to do to kind of alleviate that is first thing you need to do right now is you need to be very conscious of how you're spending your money. Don't buy unnecessary things. I'm personally a, a spendthrift, right? I love to spend. <laughs> Over the Christmas holiday, when I saw how many things I bought for friends and gifts and this and all that stuff that I bought, I was like, oh, my God. And then I like to go on vacations. Right? I like to book a trip and just go, you know. I love to be out in nature. I like to run off to the mountains and be in the cabins. I like to just go on a random trip here and there. But now that I know that layoffs are coming for all of us, all of us, listen to what I'm saying, it's coming for all of us. There is no cushy job where you're safe from layoff. There is none. Some will happen faster than others, but it's coming for all of us. So once you have a job, expect at some point to be laid off. So the first thing you need to do is curb your spending, okay? Either you make more money by doing other things in your spare time or you really, really curb your spending. No, I am a fan of making more money. That's all I've always lived. I'm like, if I need to do something to buy something, I just make more money, <laughs> right? I have ways to do that. And I don't like to feel like I have to live like penny pinching and frugal and like, I don't like it. I like to enjoy my life. Buy what I need, do what I want, and if I can't afford something, I don't say I can't afford it. I say, how can I afford it? And I open myself up into ways to make more money. But I'm going to go against that advice just for a minute to say, because the layoffs are coming, you really have to um, reduce the unnecessary spending. Like I'm a person, I love to go on Macy's, for example, I love when there's Macy's sale because they always have sale on like home products. And I love buying like an expensive duvet, you know. <laughs> I love to buy things for like my bedding, beautiful, wonderful, um, uh, colorful sheet sets and, you know, throw blankets. Like I love home stuff, right? I'm, I'm really into home stuff and kitchen stuff and, you know, like a Dutch oven, it's beautiful pink and green and all the different colors. I want to have every color in my kitchen. So those are some of the things I know is like frivolous spending I don't need to buy. I have enough bedding and blankets and comforters and duvet. I have enough. But every time I see it, I want another one. It's just like, it's an obsession. So, by the way, if anybody's thinking of giving me a gift, that would be a great gift for me. I love, you know, bedding 
sheets and stuff like that. I'm I'm very much into that home stuff. But yeah, you gotta you gotta reduce your spending in those things. Some people like to buy a bunch of shoes. I have a friend that when you go to her house and she's like, we're like, hey, we gotta go somewhere. She's like, I can't find any shoes to wear. And you open her closet, it's like shoes on top of shoes. I mean, she has a walk-in closet so big. And you're like, girl, look at all these shoes. No, but none of it fits the soft fit. Ah, and it's craziness. Stop it. Y'all can't be doing that no more. You gotta cut, cut the spending down, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, yes, you gotta make more money. So there are many ways that you can make more money. Um, a lot of you have lots of talent that you've been sitting on that you're just like, ah, oh, you know, one day I'll do it. One day I'll, you know, I'll sell my skills in making jewelry. One day I'll do this. One day I'll do that. Right. I know guys who I used to work with and they're so skilled at woodworking. One day we were having a meeting. This is right after the pandemic. And one of the guys was in his workshop and he kind of turned his camera on and said, Hey, these are some of the things I'm building and this table and chair and there. And I was like, look at the talent. You know what I mean? Look at the talent this guy has. Well, now's the time to explore those talents. If you're already good at something, figure out how you can provide that to a market and make money from that. You know what I mean? It's not the time to sit on your skills anymore and say one day. The day is today, okay? So make more money in the ways that you've thought about before, just never really focused on. Um, if you're into some kind of art, you know, you can start doing artistic things. There's so many of us women who are very good at cooking. You can make little videos about the cooking stuff that you do. Um if you're physically into making physical things, I have a friend who likes to make candles. Uh, get those candles made. Put it on Etsy, you know. Whatever talent you have that's monetizable, that is marketable, start, you know, exposing yourself to how you can really leverage that because now is the time, okay? Make more money somehow. And so entrepreneurship is going to be a big thing. Now, even before the layoffs, you cannot throw a stone on the internet without hearing about make money, you know, quick kind of thing. Like, you know, quit your job and <laughs> be an affiliate marketer or something like that. You know what I mean? There's so many money-making um, avenues on the internet. Now, I, I have always liked having a job. Here's why. Because I get some benefits from having a job that I don't get as an entrepreneur. For example, when you go to the bank and you want to get a loan, for some reason, the way to qualify for a loan when you have a, a job is much easier than qualifying for a loan when you are an entrepreneur. It's just the way the system is set up. I firmly believe in the matrix. And the matrix likes when you have a job. So it's not to say that you can't be an entrepreneur. I think being an entrepreneur is great. And I'm an entrepreneur in many different ways. But I like having a job because I just want to qualify easier. <laughs> you know, I want to work within the system that they've, they've made for us to work in and make my life a little bit easier. So I keep my job is because I like to qualify easily. Just have a good credit score. Um, make sure you meet all the other requirements. All you need to give them is just your W-2 and your taxes and you're done. Right, So I, I like the ease at which I can qualify for things because I have a verifiable source of income. Not to say you can't get the same with entrepreneurship, like you can have your taxes and you can qualify, but it's, it feels like a little bit more hassle when you're trying to get a loan based on your LLC or whatever other corporation that you may be running. Right, So think about the entrepreneurship to make more money. But also, if you can obviously start looking for another job, that would be helpful as well. Um, even in the, the height of layoffs, there's always some company out there that will hire, right? So it's not going to be everybody uh, freeze hiring at once. It's it's not true. There There's going to be cases where they hire because they have the project they have to do, they have this deadline, blah, blah, blah. So people who still hire, it just won't be at a faster rate 
than before and there'll be more people getting laid off than there will be people getting hired so you're gonna have the workforce having a lot of competition and so the salaries might even drop because there's more people available than there are jobs to fill right so think about that now the other thing that you need to think about when you prepare for a layoff is like we mentioned earlier about reinventing yourself but also reinvent your career are you sure you want to stay in this field are you happy with what you are doing if not then they just released you and now you can do what you might be happier in so a lot of people when they get laid off they really reevaluate themselves they think about what it is that they enjoy and they sometimes find a different career or apply um, something they already know in a different way to form a new skill set. And that is something they typically explore. So do the same as you prepare for a layoff. Think about it. Do you really want to be a business analyst? Are you tired of it now? <laughs> do you really want to be a project manager? Do you really want to do that? Like. What do you want to do with your life? Did you just stumble into this thing and then now you're stuck? Or are you really enjoying it and you just want to explore it more and get more money and build your career better, you know? It's a great time to self-reflect and to really do the thing that you're going to enjoy the most. As you think about getting laid off, I want you to think also about contract jobs. Because as companies become more lean, as they lay off people, they still have things in the works that they have to do. And so they'll be more willing to say, okay, um, we can't have these full-time employees because this project might just be a six-month project and we don't want to pay all this money just for someone for six months. So let's do a contract and let's get this person in for six months and then we'll figure out if we want to keep them afterwards that's okay sometimes the reason they're laying you off is because they can't pay the full-time salary so as you get if, if if it happens that you are being laid off talk to your manager talk to them and say hey i have all this wealth of knowledge i know so much about the tools the software the people the processes i'm a good asset to your organization i would like to come back and work with you on a contract basis so that you know you can get the leverage of my knowledge in your organization without having the commitment of having a full-time employee so how about we just convert our contract from being a full-time contract to being a, a, a temporary contract and if you you know if it works out then I can be you know I can renew and if it doesn't work out then you know you don't have any obligation because that will free you up from having a full-time staff with all the bells and whistles that goes with it, but it also help you to leverage my knowledge that I've been bringing to the table that will help you to get things done faster. Because if if if, if you let me go, um, eventually if you need the help, you're going to have to train somebody new, get them up to speed, and there's time that that takes. So that's an option I want to put on the table, and you guys can consider if you want to take it up. Right? So... <laughs> You have to be creative, guys. Be creative, right? Now, it's easier for them to say, yeah, they'll hire you as a contract person than to say, well, you know, let's just be done with this person because at some point they're going to need the skills that you were offering because that's why they hired you, because they had a need, right? It's not that they don't have a need right now. I believe the reason why these companies are laying people off is simply because they're broke. It's not that they don't have a need or whatever their service is that nobody wants it. It's just that we're all broke. All the companies are broke. They can't afford to pay all the employees. They got to let them go just for the survival of the company. It, the, the, the liquidity is not there anymore. They're not getting in the money anymore. So it's all a big scam anyway, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. There's a lot that goes on under the table at these higher levels, and a lot of companies are indebted to Vanguard and BlackRock, right? So when those companies go down, it's, it triples throughout many other companies, and that's, that's what's going on, I believe. Now, don't quote me on that. I can't show you any proof, but that's how I feel. 
So, what does it mean for you? It means that you as an individual way down in the food chain, way, 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 way down at the bottom of the food chain, you have to protect yourself from the decisions that are being made above your head. And the way you do that is what we're talking about today, which is consider getting into a contract job with your company because you have skills that they need. Maybe they'll be willing to convert you into a contractor. Reinvent yourself. Rethink about what do you want to do with your life? You have a chance now to redo everything. Just You get a do-over, basically, when they lay you off. Think about what you want to do with that do-over. Don't be mistaken that because you're in a government job or a public sector job or whatever, that you are exempt. The layoff is coming for all of us. It's just going to happen to different people earlier than others. Some people may be laid off this year. Some may be laid off 2024. But it's coming. Okay? I don't see turning around fast enough for it not to happen to everybody. Um, and then think about consulting. It's something I have really doubled in thinking about too. Like, you know, when do you want to become a consultant? At what point? Um, one of the reasons why I haven't gone into consulting yet is because I like the things I've been working on. I like the complexity. I like the the rapport. I like the team. There's just so there's more things than money that's keeping me where I am. But I really think consulting is the next natural step. You know, um, either go off on my own or form a group, form with a group that's already out there doing that. But I'm very very attracted to the consulting world, and I I I might just make that leap at some point. Um, but you can think about that too. You know, what can you consult about? And then think about your entrepreneurial journey. Some people want to be entrepreneurs. They just haven't figured out a way to get started. Some people have so much skills that they do outside of work that they can monetize. But I also know people who have no interest whatsoever in entrepreneurship. I know people who are like, I just want to go work for the man, get paid, and I'm done. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. The only problem is right now, the man can pay you. So you're going to have to figure out how can I make my life uh, function? How can I function? How can I pay my bills if the man just can't pay me anymore, right? So everybody has to think about that. Even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you're kind of being pushed along that lines. Uh, what can you do that there's a demand for that you can convert into money? You have to think about that. So yeah. I believe that we're all going to be okay in the end, right? So as these layoffs are happening, on the opposite end, uh, there will be cushioning for, for people who are being laid off, right? In other words, there'll be government programs, there'll be, there'll be a bunch of things. It's going to affect everyone, so I believe that they're going to anticipate the needs of people. Just like in COVID, some people could not be evicted. You know, there was all kinds of concessions that was made because it affected everybody, right? So I believe because this layoff is going to affect so many people that there'll be, there'll be concessions, there'll be, there'll be things that will be put in place to protect people. But of course, you have to protect yourself and not depend on the government. So as a responsible adult, you're going to have to just prepare, right? Again. From this point onwards, you got to make a pledge not to spend frivolously. I've made that pledge. It's hard to live by, but I'm going to make that for the next maybe three, four months just to make sure that I'll be in a position of um, success, <laughs> right? And yeah, this is what you have to do. It's a sad thing, you know, uh, not just because of the financial piece of it, but because you like your job. A lot of us like our jobs. We like the people we work with. A lot of us enjoy the social interaction that we get from work. And there's value in work. There's value in going to do something every day that they value you, that your opinions matter, that you effect change, that as a group you can build something together that's beneficial to the world in somehow, some way, right? So there's value in work. And when you don't have a job... You just find yourself feeling so empty and idle and 
Like, what do I do with my time now? Like, just stay home, watch TV all day? That doesn't seem very meaningful. You know what I mean? So, it's it takes a toll on people. And it can make you depressed if you're not careful. But I'm here to encourage you that you're going to go through this and you're going to come out better on the other side. Um, so I want you to not be too disappointed, too sad. You know, don't feel like, oh, they picked on me, they laid me off, or they did laid somebody else off who was doing a worse job or, you know, came after me. Like, why did they lay me off when other people are there who came, who was employed after me, right? What, what, what made them choose to lay me off? Because sometimes they don't, they won't lay off everybody at once. The company still has to function. And so you might be just racking your brain like, why me? You know, what, what made them choose to lay me off? You know what I mean? And there's no answer to that question. It's just, it's just a, sometimes it's just a name on a list. Just got strike through. You know what I mean? <laughs> it has nothing to do with you personally. It's just a number has to get, be reduced and you just end up being the person on the list that they decided to take off the list. So it's not you, but I know so many stories where the layoff was a good thing. It resulted in people finding their true path. People who wouldn't otherwise have had the chance to do something else finally got the chance and they took it. You know, there's so many good stories from people who got laid off. So you could be one of those good stories too. So just want to share those things with you, right? The layoffs are here for many people already, and they are coming for the rest of us. So get prepared, get ready to go. It's going to be okay. You are going to be okay. And God is going to bless us all. All right. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll talk on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Real World Business Analysis Podcast with Kara Lees. Remember to check out our latest books, courses, templates, and other resources at caralees.com. That's K-A-R-A-L-E-I-S-E.com. Take the fit test on our website to find out if you're a fit for business analysis and get the results right away. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Join our Facebook group called Real World Business Analysis and IT. We're also on Instagram and LinkedIn at Kara Lease. Goodbye for now. And remember, you are a business analyst rock star. So keep it real. Peace.